Dark Souls 3 is like a woman. It's irrational, crazy, and anytime something goes wrong, it's not their fault, it's your fault. All the enemies taking out your entire health bar with one shot to compensate for a lack of unique moves? Get good. You don't want enemies clipping through the floor into the abyss? Get good. Final boss, the worst boss in the game? Get good. And yet still in a fit of anger at 2 a.m. after 90 minutes of putting up with its bullshit, when you try to walk away from it, you can't. It's in our nature to love Dark Souls. Unless you're gay. Dark Souls is like a special type of voluntary torture only matched by people who watch golf. Unironically, it's a lethal injection of something the human mind wasn't built to understand. I'm supposed to be serving in the Great Dirt Mound Turf War of 3000 BC, throwing swings with clubs and dying at 16, and instead I'm here trying to fight two massive fucking demons that can attack through each other for two goddamn hours. Oh, and look, this one can fly above the fucking camera. This game is pure distilled cortisol. And in many ways, it's what I consider the antichrist to my dearly betrothed prototype. Despite both being nine parts gameplay and a dash of story, prototype had a relieving, soothing, and comforting gameplay loop that was better than charging the super soaker. Dark Souls feels like charging into a fiery building for $60 and then revisiting it every once in a while when you need to remember what it's like to feel that. This game will drive you to drink because of its non-stop relentless nagging. Ooh, you were auto-locked to the next target. We made you dodge off the fucking cliff. Ooh, we should go meet with my friends on Friday. You never do anything for me. Ooh, you got one shot. In one shot. In one shot. This game will get you so twisted up that you'll hypothetically fall into a painting and start getting your cheeks clapped so hard that seismologists mistake the readings for earthquakes. Then spend the next two hours trying to persevere through these crackhead demons getting fucked by nature so hard I thought I'm playing Baldur's Gate. But the whole time I'm sticking with it. Assuming this is just what they call the Dark Souls. Only do they and be told, that's a level 80 area, you're level 40, you fucking half melt Sunday. But now can I tell you something else? What Dork Souls teaches you above all is how to turn shit into shoe shine. And so instead of fighting all these enemies that were pushing my shit in, I instead let them push themselves right off a cliff so that I could collect that life insurance check like a gold digger in South Beach, netting me 20 easy levels. Now let's get balls deep into making you Dark Souls deck riders angry. This is gonna be the weirdest recommendation you've ever heard. Dark Souls is not a fun game, it's a rewarding game. It's the difference between surviving a water park and surviving the set of Saw. You're a moron if you didn't survive one, you're a statistic if you don't survive the other. You're also a little bitch. You move slow, you hit slow, and you die quick. Dodging is king, blocking is queen, and parrying is the side piece on the other side of town. And of course, backstabbing is the god that rules above all else. The hitboxes are tighter than my busted nuns. And with only a few moves, you're constantly placed at the feet of Goliath as you hear a distant, Good luck! So the first thing you do is die repeatedly and watch as the game gives you the cold shoulder, really letting you simmer in your own confusion. You know, you know something's wrong, but anytime you ask it, you don't get a real response. And then you think you got it, but you don't. Uh, the best you can get is floor markers, but this is the advice of broken men. No, what you have to do is study the game and read its Fucking mine so that you can calculate exactly what the problem is, then overcome it. Now do that five more times for every other move in the move set, and it never ends until the game ends. Try going online and asking for help, and you'll be met with a collective. <laughs> Get good. And now what they mean by this is that you should go find the 20 wiki windows, 10 videos, and two spreadsheets that they have papered across their walls, and maps out the perfect strategy to maximize DPS, HP, UPS, FedEx, and fucking Digimon so that they can one-shot every boss. And listen, I'm all for it. <laughs> I'll get good with the single most brain rotted build you've ever seen. Bitch, did I just catch you trying to use magic? <laughs> you trying to read the wiki for meta build? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Motherfucker, you know how to use the LT attack? Ah! Ah! One thing you need to understand about me and my way of playing Dark Souls is that I do it my way. Yeah, that makes sense. People are trying to tell me, Oh, use the fabulous Knight of Wonderland's Black Penetrator's hard for the max DPS perk. Shut the fuck up! Ah! Ah! My build is called the Triple T build. Target the taint, then run like hell. Read it and weep, pimps. This mirror image is like three Vietnams for Dark Souls fanatics. But if it makes you guys feel any better, at least I started this run by choosing the deprived class instead of being a little bitch and choosing Warden. And why, Fleek? Why I hear you plead? I didn't want the game to ruin perfection. And now you may be also asking, Fleek, how does one play such an advanced build? And to that I respond, Pimp, once you start this path, there is no going back. It means total commitment. Once you begin the path, there is no leaving the path. Are you ready for that? I mean, really ready for that? Don't say anything because I will disown you if you say no. Now here's the secret formula. Hold our tea. This is not a build, it's a way of living. See a boss that you could one-shot if you ran around him? Take him head on, and if your sword isn't reaching the enemy because the game doesn't want you to be fighting him this way, get out a bigger sword that can. See a horde of enemies? Booga, booga. See the stamina bar? Booga, booga. The Oonga Boonga Boonga Loo Triple T Deluxe build is all about being too dumb to quit. The only change in our strategy is the length and or the quantity of big weapons that we bring to battle. Other than that, get the chloroform ring so that you can microdose meth to regen stamina faster. And as for the armor, become rotund. Booga, booga. Now I'm gonna give you a second to cool off by talking about the story. People always go on about how awesome the Dork Souls lore is if you read all the wikis and chiseled tablets and talk to all the NPCs, and so I took a brief look at it, and this is what I can surmise. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Did you really think I can read? Now getting back to making the Dark Souls fans angry, <laughs> most of these bosses ain't shit. The enemies with branding irons that shrink your health bar if you violate the restraining order are more challenging to fight than most of these bosses. Once you learn the whack-ass timing of their swings where they go all like, yeah! You see that most of them have pretty simple movesets that largely rely on doing high damage rather than being highly aggressive or highly extravagant, including the final boss. I was expecting some grand spectacle you know, some big old demon monster with some crazy drop the sun on you twice, three AKs, and an ice katana, six arms looking goofy goober. <gasps> but instead, I just got a dude. Okay. Now with all that being said, my hairline receded 12 inches because of these two bosses alone, and both of them were completely optional. It's like all the pain that was left off the table in the basic bitch base game bosses was all reallocated into making these two a living hell. And no, it's not a coincidence that both of them can fucking fly above your camera, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Nameless King has two phases, the Dragon phase and the No Dragon phase, but both phases features him Dragging his nuts across your face. Fighting this man for two hours is like two hours of edging testicle torsion. I thought it would get better once I killed the dragon that can drop the sun on you, but then the second phase is just, what is he doing over there polishing his bike? Yeah! Then the other boss is a separate case of two hour torsion, except this time the first phase is, you know, you know, it's, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it ain't shit. But then the second phase is all directly all okay, the I see, I see, oh, I see oh, the oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the longer I go without playing Dark Souls, the more I want to play the first two games in search of that, that feeling that we once shared. Also, I hear they have incredible, massive, absolutely beautiful chests in Dark Souls 1. Y you know what? I'm buying it. I'm doing it. Anyways, I would say that you should play Dark Souls 3, but I'm pretty sure it's against YouTube toss to threaten someone like that. Besides, I, I, would I want you to preserve that beautiful, pure mind of yours, because I after playing this, I'm not sure I have much sanity left. Let's go on! The the prophecy Let's has go gone. On to the We're going joint. down to the pizza Let's party. Go on to the pizza joint. Let's go on to the pizza joint. Let's go on to the fucking 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 pizza joint. Do you see? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's right. Huge thanks to the flock of pimps for funding this pain, and all the pimperers for keeping this clown car packed with nitro. And welcome to the new pimperers. Pimperer the pimperer of mankind. Pimperer Ben Carmine. Pimperer 12 P Spicy. Pimperer Captain Titus. Pimperer Tear and Dracon. Pimperer Herschel. And Pimperer Smokey Rider. Thank you, pimperers. This shit is crazy. I love you, pimps. <laughs>